Bonds Payable Basics Problem 1. On November 1st, Year 1, Banana Corporation issued $303,000 of 8-year bonds with a stated rate of 10% at par. Interest payments occur each April 30th and October 31st. On December 31st, Year 1, Banana Corporation made an adjusting entry to accrue interest at year-end. What is the amount of interest expense that will be recorded on December 31st, Year 1? So we're asked to calculate the interest expense that will be recorded on December 31st, year one. And nothing in the question um, stem, the actual question prompt, what, it, what we're asked to do, suggests what kind of asset liability. It's, a li it's, it's, it's not an asset. It's going to be a liability type item because it says interest expense. We're not receiving interest. We're paying interest. So make sure you understand that. Could be note payable. Could be another liability. Could be a bond. Here we have bonds says that Banana Corporation issued $303,000 of eight-year bonds with a stated rate of 10% at par. Interest payments occur April 30th and October 31st, so it's semi-annual. It's semi-annual paying amount. On December 31st, year one, they made an adjusting entry to, rec uh, entry to record the accrued interest. So we're going to use a timeline. First thing is understand the formula. The formula for calculating bond interest is very similar to notes payable, but there's a few other things you got to take into account. So interest expense, just like the formula for notes payable, we're going to take the principal, the principal, which here is going to be the $303,000, and we're going to multiply that by the interest rate, the stated interest rate on the bond. So the stated interest rate on the bond, which here we're told is 10%. And then we're going to have to adjust for time if needed. So we adjust for time. And this is the same formula that we had for notes payable interest expense. $303,000 is the principal. That is the face amount of the bonds. Now, if that gets paid off over time, it goes down. The principal amount goes down. So if you're, if you're told that a bond is being paid in installments other than interest, then you have to adjust the principal amount. We're not told anything here. We just said issued $303,000 of eight-year bonds, stated rate of 10% at par. So the interest rate that's stated is 10%. We're told that. Stated rate of 10%. And now the time. The best way to understand time, I like to use little diagrams of uh, timeline. This company, they are on a calendar year. We're not told anything otherwise. The bonds were issued on November 1st. Most bonds out there are semi-annual bonds, specifically when you're focusing on corporate bonds, which we have here, Banana Corporation. So January 1st, December 31st. We're told that the interest payments occur on April 30th, so 4.30, and then they also occur on October 31st. So the idea is that there's six months and six months period of time. So we have six months here, between May 1st and October 31st. And then we've got two months here. I know the timeline isn't exactly um, two months, you know, isn't exactly uh, th the right spacing, but you get the idea. Two months from November 1st to December 31st. And then we have from January 1st to April 30th, we have four months. Now, in a perfect world, if we could, we would just do the six month entry when, when it's going to happen. But as you know, at the close of the year, which our company closes on December 31st, we have to do an adjusting entry for this interest expense that's accrued at that time. Because adjustments, adjusting entries are all about, all about timing. How much interest is liable to the the lenders, right? Banana Corporation is borrowing money. That's why That's why when Banana Corporation issues bonds, it's borrowing. It issues those bonds and it sells those to various lenders and the lenders then lend the money to Banana Corporation by buying the bonds. And then Banana Corporation has to pay interest and pay off the principal over time or at a certain point in time. Here, if you're looking at year one, though again, the bonds were issued on November 1st, on this date, on November 1st, and then we're asked how much interest expense should be recorded on December 31st. So that's just going to be two months. From November 1st to December 31st, it's just two months. Now, the 10% rate is an annual rate. So we have to take two months over 12 months, and that's going to equal three 
$103,000 times 10%. And then we take 2 over 12. And we're going to get $5,050. Now, I rounded up for that, by the way. Just so you know, I, I rounded up. If you're doing a multiple choice question, you have an ex exam like that, then, of course, pick the answer closest. I rounded to the nearest dollar. That's what I use to calculate that. Now, one thing before I go, what about the the amount of interest expense recorded on April 30th. So same facts, but you do April 30th on that, on that date. This question, the answer is $5,050 because we're just asked for the adjusting entry on that date. Now, if you're doing six months, you know, between April 30th and October 31st, you would do the same calculation, 303,000 times 10% times six months over 12 months. And that would be the normal semi-annual interest payment. The, the entry would be um, a little bit different because you'd be, the cash would actually be going out what if I asked you on April 30th? So it's not going to be six months. It's just going to be January 1st to April 30th. And the reason why is because we've already recorded two months on December 31st. So you can't record six months on April 30th when you already recorded two months. You'd be doing eight months and not six months like you should be doing. So on after we do the adjusting entry on December 31st, then when we do the next entry for these bonds on April 30th, we're only going to calculate four months worth of interest. So it's going to be 303,000 times 10% times four months over 12 months, and you calculate that amount. So keep that in mind. You could be asked a six month amount, right? Between April 30th and December, th I'm sorry, and October 31st, which would be using six months in this formula. You could be used, you could be asked about the accrual at the end of the year, which is just two months. Could be asked between January 1st and the first payment due, which is April 30th, which is four months. And again, you could change up the, the dates here too. make it two months, three months at the end of the year, four months, whatever it is, you could change these up. So go ahead, play around with that, try that. And you'll see that, you know, the formula and everything still works out the same. But again, the numbers, they could change in that regard.